A few years ago, I was fishing a Bassmaster Open on the Harris chain of lakes down in Florida. During the practice period, another angler who was fishing the tournament simply asked me, hey man, do you think there's a dock bite on this body of water? To which I replied, dude, there is always a dock bite somewhere. Now with that being said, because I was in Florida, a state that is not necessarily known for fishing docks, I actually concentrated on grass in that event. But in the back of my mind, I knew that people could probably go and catch bass off a dock. Now, although I had a good event there, I noticed that Kyle Welcher, who is now a Bassmaster Elite Series Pro, fished nothing but docks in that event and got a third place out of 225 anglers. To me, docks are really the most consistent piece of cover that we have in any lake, river, or pond to go out there and catch bass. Now, I often talk on this channel how grass is probably the best type of cover to catch bass on, but even during certain parts of the year, grass dies. And therefore, it may not always be a consistent bite. But no matter the time of the year, spring, summer, fall, even winter, bass can be caught off docks. But the only problem is, is that a lot of guys fish docks the exact same way. You see most guys fishing a dock with a jig, a Texas rig, a wacky rigged Cinco, or even a chatterbait. I can almost guarantee that if you fish docks often, I just listed a lure that you pick up probably 90 or 95% of the time. So today I'm gonna tell you how you can fish docks differently so that you can catch bass behind guys. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. This video is brought to you by the Deep Dive app. This is an app that you can download on your phone that helps you to find and catch bass a lot quicker. Once you get to the body of water that you're fishing, you can actually select that lake. Then you can input data like water temperature, water clarity, whether you're fishing around a vegetation or not, or if you are fishing in a windy or protected area. The app will then spit out some locations, some strategies, and some lures that you can use to start attacking the body of water you are fishing. There is a 100% free version and there is a paid version. And if this interests you, there's a link down below in the description and you can download it right now. Now, probably my favorite bait that not a lot of guys throw on a dock is some sort of swim bait. Right here, I'm holding a Berkeley Gilly, but I also like bait it's like a mega bass mag draft. And the thing that I really like about swim bait style baits is that they tend to skip really, really well. So I can just skip that bait way up underneath that dock. And I'm also presenting a bait under there in a horizontal fashion. If you think about a lot of the lures guys typically use on docks, jigs, wacky rigs, Cinco's, they kind of come at more of a vertical presentation. So having something that's very natural and then that horizontal presentation, I feel like can really get you bites when those other baits will not. So the next dock fishing lure that I really think can help you get more bites, especially when you're fishing on pressured bodies of water, docks that see a lot of jigs, soft plastics, tubes, you know, Cinco's flukes is going to be a skipping buzz bait. It was summer of 2016. It was July 7th, I think it was. And me and my buddy were in his bass tracker on Lake Austin and we were fishing in 106 degree weather and we just couldn't catch fish. And so my, my buddy on a whim thought, maybe we'll try under the, under the docks. And so we tried that, wouldn't get any bites. And he's like, I'm gonna try a buzz bait. So he ties on a buzz bait and I probably called him crazy because it was beginning in my fishing journey. And his like third cast, skipping it under a dock, he caught like a seven or eight pounder. And it was like our minds were blown. So I'm digging in the tackle box, trying to find buzz baits. We both found one. And over the next 30 minutes, of course, with the cameras off, that's how it always goes, we proceeded to catch 27 pounds for our best five fish in the places the bass should be under the docks, but on a lure we had never thought about and definitely in conditions that didn't quite seem right. Now, of course, skipping a buzz bait takes a certain level of skill that not every angler has, and you're definitely not born with, so you've got to put time in to learn it. And I know a guy named Tyler, and it's not me, well, it is me also, but <laughs> that's made skipping videos that you guys can watch. I'm sure he'll link one in the video description. But when it comes to the skipping buzz, what I like to do is rip that skirt off because the buzz bait in general is all about the whininess and the ploppiness of the, of the metal and not necessarily the action of the skirt. And the skirt can definitely impede how well you can skip. So I take that skirt right off or buy a buzz bait without a skirt and put on some kind of toad or flatter swim bait imitation. That way it can skip very, very well. And the cool thing is just like fishing a topwater frog, 
frog underneath docks, you're oftentimes not going to see the bite. You're just going to hear it. And let me tell you, hold on because bass attack a buzz bait and head the opposite way under docks, which can create an awesome fight. Now, the last bait that is really good under a dock and not a lot of guys throw is the depths cover scat. Now, the reason that I like this cover scat is because it is a very versatile bait and it skips like a dream. I mean, I can really place this bait wherever I want. I mean, it just skips like no one's business under a dock. Once it's under there, there's a couple of ways that I can fish it. Like I said, it's very versatile. So I can just let it sink kind of like you would a Cinco to the bottom and just kind of hop it across the bottom. The other thing that I like to do is actually fish it like a topwater bait. So I'm actually going to take this bait and I'll skip it up under there and I immediately start twitching it across the surface. And a lot of times you'll have bass, bam, come up there and get it. So although selecting a different lure than what most guys are fishing can definitely help you to catch more fish on docks, probably the biggest thing that will help you to catch more is actually establishing patterns within patterns on docks. You may fish a lake or body of water that has hundreds, maybe even thousands of docks. So understanding patterns within the main pattern of dock fishing can really help you to catch a lot more bass. Now there are three main characteristics of about a dock that I look for that help me to establish patterns when it comes to locating and catching bass. Now those three characteristics include where the dock is, what type of dock it is, and what depth that dock is sitting. If I am on a body of water that has a lot of docks, typically when I start out my day, I am going to fish a little bit of everything. I'm going to fish docks that are on the main lake. I'm going to fish docks that are in the backs of bays and pockets and coves. I'm going to fish docks in between. And really establishing a pattern as to where the bass are is really going to help you to eliminate hundreds, if not thousands of docks so that you can really concentrate on the highly productive ones. So the next characteristic to look for is what type of dock you are fishing, because not every dock is created equal. There are two main categories of docks that have subcategories underneath them. So you've got your floating docks and your stationary or your pole docks. Now the differences between those is pretty massive. The floating, as the name implies, is a floating dock, usually on some kind of pole system, or as we have in Texas where I'm from on Lake Travis, cables that go to the docks. So as the water in your lake goes up and down, not constant level lakes, uh, the lake that I grew up on, Lake Travis, it fluctuates like 60 feet every year. And so those docks cannot be stationary and they, they fish and, and hold fish a lot differently than the ones you'll see in a ton of these videos that me and Tyler are filming this week in Minnesota. Because these lakes, if they change levels, it's like six inches to two feet. And so you don't need a whole lot of floating things on your docks to make sure that it stays in the water because the water doesn't change. So you have to understand that not every dock is the same. Now, when it comes to deciding which docks, the floating or the stationary to choose from, you're going to have to really fish both. Now, some lakes, and I'd say the majority, don't really have both. So here in Minnesota, most of the docks, 90% plus, have just stationary docks. And in Texas, where I'm from, the clear deep water lakes, I don't think there's a single stationary dock on those lakes. They're all floating. But when it comes to those lakes that have both, you've got to fish everything for you know the first hour or two to find out what the fish are sitting on with a a jig, with a buzz bait, with a, a shaky head, depending on the type of dock. And then once you find that, it will really help you eliminate the rest of the docks. Am I saying you can't catch one on a stationary dock when you've got your first few bites on a floating? Of course you can. But for the pattern you are discovering on that particular day of fishing, you want to eliminate the docks that you're not finding at least the most productivity in and really focus on the ones you are. So let's pick apart the two different styles, the floating docks and the stationary to help you decide on lakes that only have one type, which one is best of that type. When it comes to floating docks, sometimes fish are going to love to be on ones that have black floats because black floats underneath docks really get the most sunlight and are going to warm up the water as fast as possible. So when it comes to early pre-spawn dock fishing, those can be some of the best floating docks because they get the water warmest and gets those fish most ready and excited to get up there and spawn. Now there's also times when the black floats are just too hot. In the summertime on Lake Travis, where I'm from, I have found in the 95 degree water, 
the better floating docks are the ones that don't have black floats. The older white styrofoam docks that are almost falling apart, those are going to be the ones that collect the most algae the fastest and thus have the best ecosystem around them for bluegill, bait fish, and of course, the bass. And when it comes to lakes that have just stationary docks, how do you pick those apart? Well, in my experience, most of the time, the fish are going to be around the oldest, nastiest looking docks. And so if you see a brand new construction out there, a new house is going up and they're bringing a brand new dock, I'm not saying you can't catch a fish there, but if there's an old dock next to a new one, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to find bass in the old one. So if you show up to a body of water and you want the fastest chance of catching a fish, go find you the oldest, nastiest looking dock, get your jig up in there, and there's probably a bass somewhere to be found. But you might find they like the thick poles. They might like the skinny poles. They might like wood over metal. They might like the, the pontoons of a pontoon boat sitting in the water. And so as soon as you find what those fish are sitting on, it's only going to take you a few docks, especially up here in the, in the northern country, to find exactly what they're on. And then as you go down the bank, you can really look up ahead, four to five docks, and see, you know what, I'm going to cast there, I'm going to cast there, and I'm going to skip all of these sections. Now, with that being said, I have fished lakes before, especially in the northern part of the country, where bass can be located on docks no matter where they are. And one of the biggest thing that determines whether that dock is now going to hold a bass or not is actually the depth of the water that you are fishing. A few years ago, I was fishing Lake Champlain up in New York and I found that there was a dock bite on this lake, but that dock had to be in a very certain depth. And to me, it had to be in about two and a half foot of water. If it was deeper than that, I would not catch a bass. If it was shallower than that, I would not catch a bass. But somewhere between that two and a half and three foot range was where all the bass were. Once I kind of established this pattern, this depth pattern, I was actually able to just idle by docks, see how deep they were, and mark them to say this is a good dock or this is a bad dock. And then later during that tournament, I was able to just run the good docks and catch a lot of bass. Now, whether you're fishing a tournament or not, you can do this exact same thing when you attack a body of water. Say that you find that all the docks that have eight foot of water on the end of them are where those bass are. Then you can idle around all the docks that you see, mark each one that has that eight foot of water on it, and then come back later in the day and just fish those highly productive docks. If you guys wanna learn more about dock fishing, I'm actually gonna link one of my favorite videos that Tyler did right here all about fishing docks. So if you enjoyed this video, you are going to like this video as well. Please comment below, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.